Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm showing you a bit of a take a lot hack. I'm going to be showing you how to get certain extra information from take a lot using an automation and I'm going to show you guys how to build that as well and you can then use that automation to bring that information from take a lot and dump it into a spreadsheet. What I'm hoping is that you guys can of course then become creative with it and add on and do things because I use Google Sheets for instance but you could actually probably adapt it for Airtable you can do anything like that and the information that I'm talking about that you probably don't have access to already unless you kind of scanning through the offers manage my offers screen is uh, and I'm going to focus it on on this video is like the wish list data because for a long time that was data that only the big huge sellers had access to and how it works is when you when a customer wish lists a product that becomes a tool because you can then send an offer you can make a promotion on that thing and they'll email all of those customers who have the item wish list so basically if you have 100 customers have wish listed wish listed your product you put it on sale they're going to get a notification saying that a product in their wish list is for sale is on sale uh, so that's kind of how it works uh, this is some of the other information that you guys can access. Don't get freaked out. Um, here's the total wish list, wish list last 30 days, weights, lengths, barcodes, titles, uh, cover days. I have done another video where I've done like offer uh, offers API um, and I show you how to just get some of the more standard information like URLs, things like that, SKUs, cover days is also available in the other API call. But in this one, we're going to focus on this. And also, of course, what you could do is very powerful is use like your page views against your wish list data, against your sales 30 days. And then you can obviously create certain algorithms on what you need to order and what you need to sell, uh, what you can you know put on sale. So if that makes sense and you guys are <laughs> with me, uh, let's jump in and create this thing. Cool. So starting off, uh, I use make, um, you just go to make.com and sign up for an account. Use my link below. It does help support the channel. Open it up, fill in all your details. You don't have to do anything spe special there. Uh, and then just go to new scenario and it'll look like this. You'll have it nice and centered when you, when you start it up. Uh, so what we're going to start off with is this thing called HTTP. You might have to come here and just go search HTTP. And we're going to go down to make a request. Then what we're going to do is open that up and we're going to need to put in the URL. And here's a, a trick how I'm getting these sort of secret URLs is from, uh, let's get an example, is from here. You can see on the, uh, if you open up the Chrome, I'm in Google Chrome and you can open up the inspector and you can go to network and you can search for anything on the network via API. And you can actually see here's the uh, API endpoint. The whole take a website is built on different APIs that you can access. If you go to the API documentation, this won't be here. So this is the only way to find it. Uh, so we're going to copy that, this part. Uh, otherwise, you guys will just have to retype it up to this uh, size equals 100. And then I'm going to go back here, paste that in. We need a header. And we also need to pause the response. So what I'm going to do here is type key, and then you're going to put a space, and then you're going to do the um, you're going to get your seller API key. And that's going to be from, you know, go to seller portal, uh, API, and then go to, uh, you'll be able to generate an API key. If you've already got an API key generated, go find it and paste it in here, uh, with the space and then paste it in there. And that's going to be, uh, we're going to be using this, uh, throughout. So I'm not pasting it now cause I'm just going to make sure to, uh, hide it from you guys. Cool. All right. So here is, it's a good time to save now. And what we're going to do is run this. So you've pasted in your key and you can go run, uh, right click run and you'll come here to data and then you'll go to offers and you'll be able to see all of your offers coming through. What we'll do next is go to flow control, create an iterator 
I'm going to select this offers over here. Then what I'm going to do is do a array aggregator. You don't really have to understand what, what exactly is happening here. Um, it's going to make more sense uh, in future. Um, and then I'm going to select as the source. I'm going to click uh, make a request. And I can just click OK there for now. We'll come back to that. Then I'm going to go to Sheets, Google Sheets, and then I'm going to find, if you can't find, if you don't have these here, you just have to go to Add and find the modules. Uh, so I'm going to use Bulk Update Rows. And then if this is your first time using Make, you'll have to go to Add and just sign into that same Google account. Uh, sign into your uh, normal day-to-day -day Google account and the one that we're going to create a spreadsheet with. For the spreadsheet, this is what it's going to look like. Mine's all blurred out. Uh, I'm just doing SKU wishlist and wishlist last 30 days. And uh, what I'm going to do is select this URL up here. Yours will be unique to your blank spreadsheet. And I'm going to paste that in there. I'm going to call it Sheet 1 because that's what the, exactly how it's spelled in Google Sheets. And it's A2 to ABC is the range that we're going to update. And the rows is we're just going to select this array um, from here. And then I have to come back to here. And we can just set this target structure to rows like this. And we can start adding values on what we need to do. So these are the fields that I have access to add. If you don't have them, what we need to do is just select OK. And at this point, you're going to run it. So it should uh, fetch all of your items. It'll iterate through them. And then on the array aggregate, now you would be able to see it if you didn't have it there already. So this one, I'm going to keep it very simple. I want the SKU. I can search for it, SKU. And then wish list total and wish list 30 days. So those are just the fields. You can add as many as you like. And then obviously just here where you update the rows, you want to make it like A, B, C if it's three columns, D if it's four, E if it's five, and so on and so forth. And then what we can do is let me clear everything there and come back to here. And when I click Run, there it just pops in. Uh, the beauty of this is that you can now set this to run at regular intervals every 30 minutes. You obviously have to, depending on how much you want to pay, uh, you get a few operations for free. This is an operation, so it's only using four operations to get this data. If you have loads of offers, it will use more. And uh, yeah, you could run this every day and then you can use that data with in conjunction with your sales metrics from other places and you know make all algorithms. Last thing you want to do is you can change this page size up to a thousand, I believe, is the maximum. So that way you're going to be able to get all of them in. If you need, if you have more than a thousand, you're going to have to iterate through them uh, by using this page number as one, and you're going to use a repeater, and you'll put it there like that, and you'll say, "Okay, it repeats three times." And then over here, you're going to change this to this little I. And then it's going to repeat it one, two, three times. And then it's going to be page one. And then you also just have to change this to now back to the repeater module. And then that will set it to run three times. So that's if you have 3,000 offers, you'll do it for three. If you've got 10,000, it was just repeat it for 10,000. And that's just about it. So guys, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this data and obviously more on like the selling side of things. <clears throat> I'm a big proponent of making sure that you've got the data to make the right decisions, that your information is in a place in a manner that you can digest it. Uh, often I feel like if you have to go through seller portals and different multiple different portals, because now you've got Amazon, 
take a lot, Leroy, you know, all in different places. Uh, if you have to go to each single one, it becomes a very complicated and tricky process. If you can have that all standardized and aggregated into one place, you can also simplify it for other users. You can simplify it for, um, let's say, staff that you don't have uh, access control for. So if you want to just have like your operations team have access to this take lot sales data and stock levels on take lot, but you don't want to let them, uh, you don't want to let them have just like free reign on it. So yeah, it becomes a very, very powerful tool. Uh, this one in particular, I think is super handy. Run your SKUs, find out how much, you know, sort them then by like most wish listed with most page views, run ads on those, or if it's got a lot of page views and not conversions, you know, there's a lot of information that you can deduce from that. So uh, that's just about it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I know it's a bit more techy, but I'm quite enjoying all these powerful automations that I've been doing. And uh, yeah, if you guys like it, like it. And I'll see you guys in another, in another video. <laughs> Cheers.